Okay, we have a, a new statue to deal with. This is the one that's referred to as a lawn jockey. Actually, a commemorative statue, according to legend, for one young fellow named Jocko Graves, who was a groomsman for George Washington, according to legend, who, uh, and these statues are supposed to be commemorative of the heroic act of Jocko when Washington crossed the Delaware. Jocko stayed on the Pennsylvania side of the Delaware River to keep the horses ready and to keep a lantern going so that the men could find their way back uh, to the horses. Jocko supposedly froze to death uh, while Washington and his army were <clears throat> fighting the Hessians and to commemorate uh, Jocko's faith faithfulness to his uh, to his job uh, Washington supposedly commissioned the original to commemorate Jocko's uh, acts. Anyway, this is a concrete version of what was probably originally cast iron. And uh, we can see there's a bad crack here. The head is separated from the body, being held together only by the reinforcing wire. Uh, there's something going on with his hand. We'll have to take all his tape off, find out what's going on. There's a piece of uh, uh, iron sticking out here. We'll have to determine what's going on. So there was a lantern on this thing. And we find down here on the legs, this is uh, not only broken, but it's displaced, uh, making the whole thing unstable. So the first thing we want to do is probably to stabilize the lower legs with the body with some epoxy and we'll work from there. And I got the tape off of that hand. It'll take a while to figure out what this is. I think this is probably originally this is probably originally a circular round this piece loose that tape was holding it on laying in here like this I at first thought it would fit in there somewhere but it's a perfect match for right there it fits right in there I have to do some figuring out here as to what this originally looked like I have a feeling that this is this is all bent anyway this piece will go in here and I think we can probably reattach that keep that original piece and then we'll see what needs to be done here. That hand's going to take some major work to to restore. And, uh, have to look at some of the. This looks like a. You know, it's probably his hand here holding some kind of a ring. Oh well. Take a look at that. here to save this. We'll evaluate that in a bit. Okay, first thing we're going to do is get this stabilized, the legs stabilized, because this is really unstable. Um, I'm going to mix up this JB Weld uh, putty epoxy. It's waterproof, so it's good for outside too. We're going to force that in as far as we can into the joint. And then I think because it's unstable in this direction, but not this way, I'm going to drill two holes, cut a groove, and put in a U-shaped piece of metal to stabilize it. It'd be the way you stabilize, same way that they stabilize cracks in a 
in a swimming pool. So I got to get some gloves, cut off a chunk of this. We're going to force this down as far as we can into the crack to stabilize, uh, to glue it together with epoxy. And then we'll put a stabilizing, maybe we'll do it on both legs, put a stabilizing bar in it to uh, keep it from moving this way. Forcing this epoxy putty as deep into that crack as I can get it. This on the head. Hopefully this will stabilize it. Uh, this is his hand. This is where a rebar came out. It was probably bent in a circle at one time. But the, this piece I just had to glue on yesterday. And I don't think there's any way to really bend this back to where it should be so I can get that hand back in place uh, with this in the way. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out of here. And then uh, we'll make a, a new circle of uh, out of brass, I think. We'll find a way to hook that on there. But uh, this isn't going to work, so I'm just going to cut this off. I got that thing removed now. It was like this. And it was just too bent. So now I'll be able to take this hand and put it back in here. There we go. Fits perfect right like that. Then what I'll do is, actually, you can see here's his fingers. So actually if I drill a new hole here, a hole here, and a hole down in here, I think I can go ahead and get a brass ring to fit in there. I don't have to put it all the way in. I can snap it in a hole here, snap it in a hole there. Then it can be removed if it need be. But that's just uh, a mess. That fits in there. It broke completely off, but somehow that was bent and was way out here. I'm going to try to get that bent back in so this would fit right. Just wasn't going to happen. And then we can proceed. We can start filling some of this in. It was a space was big enough. There were about half a dozen spider egg nests in there. Okay, well, I think that's about all we're going to get done right now. I think I want that epoxy to set overnight completely cure so then it should be much more stable and, and we'll do those rings on the 
and supports in the back of the legs. Okay, it's been 24 hours since I put that epoxy in there and it definitely stabilized that thing pretty well. But I don't want to rely completely on the epoxy so we're going to do something on the back here with some things and then I want to attach this hand as well. And that will go right in there. But first I'm going to drill that out a little bit. Drill a new hole here for the ring that will go around. Okay, we got the putty Boxy putty pushed into that crack pretty good. It's only has a working time of 25 to 30 minutes. It sets hard in an hour. So we'll let them set. And uh, we got that around the head. And we got it around the knees and legs. Hopefully that'll hold that together, but like I say, I think I'll since it's unstable this way, we'll put uh, drill a hole here, a hole here, well beyond the crack, go in maybe an inch, and uh, put them, cut a groove here, put a metal rod in, put them in there, embed them with epoxy, cover the hole groove with epoxy and that should hold that together. They say that's the method they use for fixing cracks in swimming pools and that's what we'll do with this one. It's a one-eighth inch concrete drill. pins go in there okay they'll go in there and in here like so and then we'll cut a groove here for this to fit into and then we fill the whole thing with epoxy
just got to cut a groove down there and that'll fit in there all the way and that will do it. on the ends, put the pin in. Okay, we got a pin in there, and we have a pin in there. Now we'll let those set up, and that should stabilize those legs, keep them from falling forward. Okay, glued the hand on from uh, with epoxy, and uh, let's put a rubber band on it, hold it in place, and I think we'll let it set. Jocko is starting to come around. We've got the hands stabilized. We got the legs stabilized. Problem is the reinforcing material inside the legs was bent pretty bad and uh, it was almost impossible to get everything lined back up as it originally was. These are now glued together and supported on the back. But in uh, getting them back together, you can see there's some variation here on uh, this is not exactly completely lined up on either side. So what I'm going to do I'm going to have to grind off a little bit of this to bring it flush. And uh, same over here. There's a little bit here in the front that's a little hard to see, but this is sticking just slightly proud of the thigh. So I need to grind this down. And then we'll, we'll re-texture everything and uh, bring it into... Uh, something that looks like it hasn't been touched at all. And to do that, I'm going to use a grinder. This grinder specifically. This is a diamond wheel. And, I, and this grinder is uh, can run at very slow speed. So I'm going to be doing that uh, to grind this off a little bit and uh, bring it uh, so that it lines up properly and then we'll get to doing the concrete part.
Okay, that's good. Okay, time to mix up a little concrete, pour it on the cement. And I'm going to get my measuring spoon. Well, one, two, two of that. And put in one. Recycled glass, and then we will put in that a kaolin, and we'll put in about half a thing of that a kaolin, and mix this up. acrylic to this, but not before I paint the acrylic on the... And here, and what we're going to do is we're going to take the acrylic and we're going to paint it right in. We're going to add concrete. We'll go around his neck. <clears throat> Essentially, muddy clay like, and then we're going to apply this. And we'll let it sit for a while, and then we will sculpt it, carve it. What we need. Get some in there now. Putty like concrete. We'll force it into the arm hole here.
wet brush to conform it, shape it. some corrections with the sandpaper later. Now we gotta do the same down here on the legs. Now we'll take acrylic, paint acrylic into the crack. Into the area surrounding the crack. Just a little bit thicker. See, it looks like a crease there. And we'll finish that off with sandpaper after this cures. Get any roughness out of it. Get some acrylic in there. Lift it right down into the crack.
65 pounds, so kind of hard to move around. Real fine sandpaper. Finish that. that slot that we cut with that metal reinforcer. Further smooth that and blend it. Now I use some sandpaper after it cures. Okay. Hit that one. Clean things up. Mix some more up and finish the rest of this. You gotta patch that hole flat. 
And then there are things like that, like uh, where it's been got little bubbles, pieces that have been weathered away, like down in here. So I'll mix up a slurry and smear it on, and that'll take care of filling a lot of that. We've got all the holes filled in. I'm just going to let that sit now for at least 24 hours. And then we'll come back and we'll very fine sand him. And then he's going to be ready for paint. Okay, here's Jocko. The concrete is all hardened. And now what we're going to do is going to take some fine sandpaper. We're going to sand him off and then we're going to paint him. And I think what we'll do, the original statue was probably blue, the working clothes of people back then would be blue shirt and a, or blue pants, white shirt, and I think we'll do this, and I'd be kind of patriotic too, blue pants, white shirt, red vest, and hat. Sanding just takes off this little bit of roughness and stuff from filling in the pores and sand and the uh, concrete and leaves a smoother surface for painting. bronze wouldn't they? Okay we started painting. We're not gonna go paint the racist kinds of colors that were used on some of these statues in the past. We're going to try to use a more realistic color. Jocko, the respect that he deserves as an American hero. over 
painting through the hair and stuff. Not a lot of detail in the sculpting of this thing to begin with, so we'll just do the best we can to make it realistic. And now we gotta do the front of the red vest. another coat.
and that's going to about do it. Now it's got to clean up the workbench.